To get started, open up a web browser and type in install.wled.me. Next, from the dropdown, go ahead and select the sound reactive version of the software and then click install. Now, as long as you're using a USB cable that supports data, when you plug it in, you should see something pop up over here. But if you plug things in and nothing happens, it will generally be for one of two reasons. First is you might need to update your drivers. There are links provided right on the page that you can click on to install them if you think that might be the issue. For the ESP device I'm using, I would need to install the driver for the CP212 chip. The other reason might just simply be the cord you're using doesn't support data transfer. I'll leave a link in the description to the one I'm using here that I know for sure works. Now, since ours did show up, we can select it and hit connect. So at least for the ESP model that I'm using, you need to press and hold down the boot button on the device before clicking install. And I'm not exactly sure how long you need to hold it down for, but I generally let it go as soon as it says installing. Once installed, I'm going to click next and enter in my Wi-Fi information. My network name is Jesus Loves You, and I have the J, the L, and the Y capitalized, so I'm going to enter that here. And finally, put in your password and hit connect. It should now say the device is connected to the network, and at this point, WLED Sound React is now flashed onto our ESP32 so we can unplug things and move on. Now we have to choose a microphone. I've tested out quite a few different options, but in my opinion, this has been the best one I've used so far. And if the pins are not already separated, go ahead and break them in half. Now to get the pins connected to the board, I'm going to do a little bit of soldering. Using my helping hands, I'll get everything in place and then put the hot iron that I have set to around 550 degrees Fahrenheit against the pin and then apply a little bit of solder which will melt right into the hole. And then you can do the same thing for the other side. For getting everything connected, I'm going to be using these thick 20 gauge jumper wires that I recently found on Amazon. And for this first step, I'm going to take a red, white, and green wire. All three of them will have the one male and one female end. So on this first step, the red wire goes into the VIN pin, the white into the GND, and the green will go into the D2. Moving on to the mic, the SD is the data, the VDD is our voltage, GND is ground, we don't need the LR, but we will be using the WS and SCK pins. First, take a jumper wire that has one male and one female end and insert into the GND pin on the mic. Next, use a wire that has female ends on both sides and put it into the VDD pin. From here on out, I'll be using the same female wires, and I'm putting a green one in the SD slot next. And on the other side, I'll be using some yellow wires for the WS and SCK pins. Now you can take the green cable from the mic and plug it into the D32 pin on the ESP module. The red wire is going to get connected to the 3V3 pin. The yellow WS goes to D15, and then the yellow SCK will go to D14. Now for our two white ground wires, I'm going to use a three slot Wago piece to connect them together. I could snip off the end to expose the wire before putting them in, but the male end of the jumper wire seems to fit in there just fine without having to do that. And finally, I'm going to take one last jumper wire that has two male ends and put one side in the last slot of the Wago connector we just used. We should be left with three male pins exposed. One is the ground we just did, the other is the red wire connected to the VIN pin of the module, and the last is the green cable connected to the D2 slot on the ESP device. We can set this aside for now to begin working on our power supply. For this, I'm going to be using a 5 volt 20 amp unit from BTF Lighting that has two positive and two negative terminals. Now to get power from the wall outlet to the unit, I got this three prong AC cord. Traditionally, I've always just stripped things back and put the twisted strands of wires in the terminals, which I've never had any issues doing, but a few people did mention I should instead use some ferro plugs. And it turns out it's a very easy extra step that I for sure don't mind doing if it's going to provide a better connection. The black wire will go on the left, which is our live, the white is our N and goes in the middle, and the green is our ground. Next, I'm going to prep two 18 gauge silicone wires that will be providing the power to our LEDs and ESP device. Both wires will be about 12 inches long, and I'll be doing the same thing on one of the ends with these that I just did with the ferrule terminals.
Then the white wire will go into one of the two negative terminals on the left, and the red wire will go into one of the two positive terminals on the right. As far as LEDs, my setup I'll be demoing at the end consists of SK6812 strips that have 60 LEDs per meter like you're seeing here. A lot of different ways you could go about getting things connected, but I'll be taking the lead power injection wires and stripping them back. Next, I'm going to lay out my LEDs and connect the red and white power injection wires from the strip to the red and white positive and negative ones from my power supply using an inline wiggle piece. And finally, we're going to take our ESP32 and mic setup from earlier and plug the three male ends of the red, green, and white jumper wires into the matching colors of the LED strip's lead connector. So now we can plug in the power supply and load up the WLED app. In the top right corner go ahead and hit the plus icon and then click discover lights. Once it finds the ESP device that we installed sound react on, you can hit the check mark and then go into WLED sound react. Now to get things set up, go into configure and then LED preferences. I need to first scroll down and change the LED strips to SK6812 since it defaults to the WS281X. Make sure the GPIO pin is set to 2 since that's the pin we put our data line on and then enter in the number of lights you have on your strip. And then near the top, I'll usually set the automatic brightness limiter to around 3000 milliamps and then click save. Next, go into sound settings and towards the bottom where it says generic analog, hit the drop down and select generic I2S. The SD, WS, and SCK pin should all default to what we used so you shouldn't have to change anything, but if for some reason yours looks different, make sure it reads 32, 15, and 14 like it does here. And finally, I like to keep the automatic gain control set to off, and I found that changing the squelch to 20 and keeping the gain at 40 worked best for me. Once complete, hit save. The device will save the settings, but when it comes to, you still have to go back, click on info, scroll down, hit reboot WLED, and confirm reboot. And as a side note, on some of the non-digital mics I tested out, such as the Max 9814, doing this reboot did not work, and I ended up having to unplug and plug the power unit back in one or two times before WLED recognized things. I'm going to keep this pretty high level, but in my effects, I like to have my rate of fall all the way to the right. I have the sensitivity slider in the middle, and my gain control is set to around 20 and a lot of this is personal preference, so make sure to play around with these yourself. Now I don't know if things have just improved since last time I played around with WLED Sound React, or maybe I'm using a better mic, or possibly it's just that I have a better setup to showcase some of the effects, but I was absolutely blown away with how things performed, and I hope it comes across on the video just how awesome this works. And to quickly recap what I have going on, one ESP32 device with WLED Sound React will be running both floor lamps. I have the data split coming off the controller, so they're going to be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. The second ESP32 is also running WLED Sound React and will be controlling the top and bottom diffusers. The data is split on this one as well, so they too will be doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Both mics for these two devices are roughly in the same area back here, out of sight. And finally, I have a third ESP32 running just regular WLED to control the media console. Check, check. Check, check. And for some of the effects to look more symmetrical, I can go into the segments and hit the mirror button to get the results I want. And just like regular WLED, you can change the sound react animations to any color or color palette that you want. So from here on out, I'll just play some of my favorite music examples of the setup in action. Please let me know if you have any questions, and as always, I hope you enjoy the final videos.